Is the body positivity movement unintentionally enabling poor health decisions? Let's dive into the movement and where and how it fits into health. Listen in as I take a holistic perspective. Hang on guys, it's about to get real. Does your metabolism suck? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you want off the diet roller coaster? Do you wish there was a simple solution to get you healthier, smaller, and have more energy? Hey friends, I'm Jolene. I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner, wife, furry guardian, and non-bendy yogi. Like you, I spent years chasing skinny instead of healthy until I finally learned there's more to getting healthy than eat less and move more. Welcome to Holistic Health Made Simple, where I share all the tips, tricks, and science to set you free from the diet overwhelm and frustration with the ever-changing health rules. We go beyond the calorie and diet dogma to equip you with simple changes to real food, mindset, and lifestyle. If you are ready to learn to tailor your journey to your current health, implement simple solutions, and achieve undeniable results, then this is the podcast for you. Pop in those headphones, take a deep breath, and let's get healthy. Hey, hey there. Unless you lived under a rock, you've heard about the body positivity movement or you've seen something alluding to it because it's almost everywhere. Before we dive into how it affects your health and how you can incorporate the positives of everything, let's first define what it is. I just want to make sure that you understand how I'm defining it so that we're on the same page and there's no misunderstanding. The body positivity movement is considered a social and cultural movement that promotes the exception and celebration of all body types, regardless of size, shape, appearance, age, any of it. It advocates for the idea that all bodies are valuable and should be embraced without judgment or discrimination. The movement encourages people to love and respect their body, fostering a positive body image and self-esteem. It sounds great on paper, and I agree with everything I just said. Now, the key principles of this movement include size inclusivity, rejection of body shaming, embracing diversity, self-acceptance, advocacy for mental health, challenging discrimination. Based on that list and the definition, we all should be embracing the body positivity movement. Now, with that said, I want to empower you to love yourself, to get over picking at the imperfections of your body, to stop striving to be something that your body was never built to be. You see, we're all human. We all have our little flaws. Some of us carry more weight in our butt and our thighs. Some carry it more in their chest. Some carry it in their stomach. And we should all be acceptance of ourself as ourself. Our body is just a part of us. It is not who we are. Now, there's a lot of people, myself included, that have always had weight issues. And they stem from emotional issues, binge eating, um, and and, uh, things of that nature. Or they just weren't taught proper nutrition. That doesn't mean they shouldn't love themselves. They should love themselves. I want each and every one of you to start looking in that mirror and loving yourself where you are today. And I'll dive into why in a minute, but I I still want to go a little bit deeper on this whole positivity movement and the benefits of it. When you are empowered to like yourself and have confidence, your whole world changes But you can't just have that on the outside. You have to truly believe it. You have to love yourself deeply, flaws and all. Because no matter what size you are, you'll have flaws. Physical, mental, personality, whatever it is, you'll still have flaws. So being positive about your body, loving your curves. Nobody is meant to be a child until they're 50, like have that stick figure with no curves, no nothing. Women weren't built like that. So as women, we need to embrace our curviness. We need to embrace the fact that we might be a little softer in areas than we want to be. We need to love ourselves and not let our body define our self-worth. Loving yourself is the first step of having any kind of healthy relationship, whether it be with a companion, a family member, a child, a friend, anything. 
If you have no self-worth, that relationship isn't going to be strong and you'll be doubting everything about it. So I want you to take a step back, get whatever help you need to start loving you for you and ditching that you're not worth anything because of the way you look or because you got dimples on your butt or because you got a big belly, whatever it is. Start focusing on this body positivity. Let's take the positive, all the list I just said. Take that and use that to empower you. But that's the only parts of the body positivity movement I think we should be taking away. We should be loving ourselves as we are. And I know I'm, I'm saying this over and over again because I really want it to drill into your head that you are worthy you are worthy of love. You are worthy to love yourself. Once you love yourself, you can invite love from others in. When you don't love yourself, it is a never-ending life of pain. So start getting that help, working and doing the underwork because that mental part is the hardest part. A lot of us hide behind the weight from past hurts, abuse, whatever it is. That weight was there to protect us, to not let whatever happened, happened again, or it's our comfort. It's time to love your body now and how far it's taken you into this life. Now, let's get into the other side of why I think we need to shift the paradigm a little bit on the body positivity movement. No matter what your size, shape, weight, I don't care as long as you're healthy. There comes a point in time where this body positivity movement has taken an extreme and not focused on the health. We're looking for a healthy relationship with our body, but we're not worried about the health on the inside. That's where I cut ties with the movement. I want you to love yourself enough to take your health seriously. Now that doesn't mean you, you, losing weight. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying to take your health seriously. Until we can separate health from skinny, it's going to be difficult. But I want you to follow along my journey into the future and realize that health is not the number on the scale. It is your biomarkers. It's what's going on inside of you. Yes, healthy muscle tissue is coming out more and more to help us into longevity. But most people have 40% of their body as lean muscle tissue. You just need to maintain it. You need to get your organs running properly. You need to get any diagnosis you have on the other side. Fight for your life. Fight your health for your life. I don't care if you don't lose a pound. I don't care what size you are. It's time to fight for your health. By accepting your body, you should not be accepting your health. You should be doing whatever you can to be healthy. You see, we got to this point in these movements that I've seen lots of TikToks and reels and people saying, oh, I just love myself. I'm going to go have another 10 cheeseburgers. I mean, I'm exaggerating. I get that. But what I'm trying to say is, is if you truly love your body and the skin you're in, and you want to be the best you possible, you can't neglect your health. You just can't. They go hand in hand. You want to be positive about your body. You need to get healthy. But the disconnect comes is because society equates health with skinny. But they don't go together. I know many skinny people who are really sick. They're not. They're malnourished. They don't like their body either. So it's not about a size. It's about embracing yourself, learning to love yourself enough to take care of yourself. Your body is a temple. It's time you start take caring it as if it is that temple. Don't think just because you can love your body, you don't have to worry about your health. I know this episode's getting very preachy, but I care about you. And I want to make sure you are the healthiest you around. I don't care what size you are. It doesn't matter to me. I think people of all shapes and sizes can be healthy as long as they're focusing on being healthy and not healthy with medicine. Healthy by taking charge of their health. 
There are people who are 200 and 300 pounds that run marathons. They are going to the gym no matter what size you are. Don't worry if people look at you. Who cares about them? They're not judging you. They're thinking, damn, if they can do it, I should be able to do it. Don't think they're judging you that you shouldn't be there. They're jealous of how far you've come and at how much determination you have. I want you to get that determination. Focus it on your health. Go for walks. Get your blood sugar under control. Get some more lean muscle mass. Lift some weights. That's not all to look good. Exercise is not to lose weight. It's to be healthy. Find something you like. You like to dance? Go for it. Dance for an hour every day. Go take dance lessons. Do something. Move that body. That's step one. I don't care what size you are. You got to learn how to move your body. If you're bedridden, get an exercise bike on your, like a hand bike or an exercise bike. If you can't afford that, get some two water bottles and just start moving your hands and punching them. Move the body. You deserve to be healthy. Nobody needs to be skinny, but everybody needs to be healthy. Do things that will get you there. You want three simple tips. Step one, move your body. I just said it. Move your body. It helps with the glucose regulation that will help you tremendously. That is the first and foremost step. Step two, eliminate the ultra-processed foods. Do it slowly. Don't do it all at once. That's a big change to your diet. I'm pretty sure of it. Do it little by little. Start incorporating a few more vegetables, then more protein, then more fruits and vegetables and getting rid of ultra processed food week by week until it's pretty much gone except for a special treat or occasion. Know your triggers if you're a binge eater and stay far away from them. I'm not one of those that you can moderate it even if it's a trigger. If it's a trigger, it's a trigger. Get rid of it. Most of us don't have the mental willpower to stay away from our triggers. It's plain and simple. So I gave you two steps. One, move. Two, eat um, unprocessed foods. Step three, hydrate. Water. Water. Let water flush everything out of your system. Drink water. Years ago, it was told to me over and over and over again, healthy people drink plain water. I know some of you are going to say, I don't like it. It doesn't taste good. Learn to like it. Start with some lemon in it or lime or float some cucumbers in it until you can get down to just at least having three eight ounce glasses of absolutely plain water. Try to eliminate sweeteners. But the three things I want you to focus on, especially right now, to switch it from a health to a health perspective, is move your body any which way you can, get rid of your ultra processed foods, and drink your water. With that, start working on the mental aspect. I am not a therapist. There are many out there. There's many support groups. Learn to love your body where you're at. But love it enough to get healthy. On that note, my friends, I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening in today. I hope you got some nuggets to take on your health journey. Remember, this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes. No medical advice is being given. By listening to this podcast, you agree to the full disclaimer, which is linked in the show notes. If you found this podcast helpful, could you take 30 seconds and leave a review? Your feedback means the world to me, and it helps others discover my show. Once again, thank you for being part of my community. Until next time, have a blessed day.